everyone, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today is quite an exciting day because I've made a decision about this patio area and the path that's leading off it here and I've made the decision to put an arch up here so that there's like a sort of more of an entrance and more of a division, a separation between this patio area and the beds that are beyond it. So what we're doing today is we're going to measure this space for the arch just to check which size arch we need and we're going to plant um, replant this area so specifically we're going to replant this bed here but I'm also going to take a plant out of the other side of the flower of the flower bed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you along whilst we do that so I've roped Richard in because I know that I'm probably not strong enough to get some of these plants out I can get the new ones in but some of these plants have been here a while and I think I'm going to really struggle so I'm going to show you what the bed looks like here and what we're taking out and I just talk you through those plants and why I've decided to take them out and then we'll measure it up and then um, as I'm planting the new plants I'll tell you which plants I've chosen for this area instead. So just to give you an idea of where we are this is our patio seating area and this is our eucalyptus hedge here and this is a pathway that leads to some of the rest of the garden and on either side of the pathway I planted a philadelphus. Um, it's got really nice big white flowers and it did do really well in the first few years and I kind of imagined having this beautiful sort of um, I don't know, like an enclosed sort of passageway to walk through. But actually, Philadelphus doesn't grow like that. And once it's flowered, it looks pretty ugly the rest of the year. So a Philadelphus is also called a mock orange and it has the most incredible scent. The flowers really do smell lovely, but that's only for a very short while while the plants in flower. And then the rest of the year, it's more like a sort of scraggly hedge and actually what I'm finding with the Philadelphus on either side of this path is that I have to uh, spray the bugs off um, on a regular basis especially when the shoots are opening up in the spring um, I got I get loads of black fly I think they are and so I either have to spray them off with jets of water or I use like a soapy solution to spray them off but it's just a pain and I really don't want to have to keep doing it every year so I'm not enjoying these plants here as much as I thought I would and I'm going to move them to the back of a border uh, where they won't be so much in your face, but we'll still get the beautiful flowers and fragrance um, when they come into flower. But I probably, um, I just don't think that they're the right thing to have on either side of a path. I did have visions of walking through this perfumed corridor. Um, it just hasn't really happened. It happened maybe the first year or two. And since then, we just haven't had the same feel here and I need to change it. So we're going to dig out the Philadelphus today. And then in front of this Philadelphus here, um, because it's quite a sunny spot, it gets a lot of morning sun, probably right through till noon time. I planted a yarrow, Achillea, and it, it's fantastic. It looks quite good, but it's also a little bit scraggly and just not the most attractive plant to have here. So I've got something else to go in that spot there. And then of course, I'm going to dig out the other Philadelphus, which is here and actually isn't doing particularly well. It's behind this lovely rosemary bush. Um, so I'm taking that out too. So what we're also going to dig up is um, something where I made a mistake and I planted, I think it's a potentilla. I got it from a plant friend. It's got these gorgeous little red flowers and it's ever so pretty and it's spread. So I started off with this one plant and I've now got two more plants. Um, so it spreads really easily, which is fantastic, but I think it needs a sunnier spot and this spot just doesn't get enough sun. There's a lot of bed over here. And so this area is fairly shaded for most of the day. It gets morning sun, probably up till midday and then it's shaded. And in fact, once I've got my archway here um, with an evergreen, this is going to be even more shaded. So I do need to take these out and we're going to plant them today somewhere else. So we've had a look at this and what we've decided to do to make it easier to dig it out is to chop everything down to ground level. Um, it does mean that we're going to lose all the flowers this year, but that is fine by me. We're going to move it to the back of a border anyway and we'll have flowers in future years, but it's just going to be so much easier to move it if we don't have all these branches. Um, and as I said, we're not bothered about losing the flowers this year. It will grow back really well.
it's out, but it's left a pretty big hole. So we're going to mix the native soil in here with a bag of compost. It's peat-free multipurpose compost, but we're just going to make sure that we move the native soil around because it's much better for new plants not to be planted straight into a bag of compost. That's not going to help them um, seek out uh, nutrients from the surrounding soil and root in. So if you want a plant to root in, um, don't make the environment around the root ball so comfortable and nutritious for it that it doesn't um, spread its wings, so to speak. So we're also going to dig out this yarrow here, the Achillea. Um, I think it's a summer berries mix, um, but I don't want that there anymore. I've got something really pretty to go in that space. guarantee we will always provide you with bent fork entertainment or broken forks. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about the plants that we've chosen to go in this spot. So over the new arch, which we haven't ordered yet because we still need to measure how big we want it to be, how wide, um, but I will order that and it should come quite quickly. Uh, we are going to plant two Trachylia spurnum jasminoides. These are star jasmine um, and they are beautiful evergreen climbers. They're woody and they have these lovely, um, in late spring early summer they've got lovely white flowers that smell absolutely wonderful so it's a really vigorous climber and it will grow to about nine meters by six meters but obviously it can be tamed by pruning it uh, whenever you need to so I want to make sure that it's not too close to the pathway edge and um, when I plant it because obviously through the season it's going to bulk up a bit and I don't want it encroaching on the pathway um, but I want to be able to walk through with ease and obviously take the wheelbarrow through whenever we need to. Um, so I've chosen this climber because it is evergreen and because it has wonderful scent, which is something I really wanted on this path. But I feel like an evergreen archway here is really going to define the patio a bit more and then the garden beyond. And it is going to sort of make it into more of a room on the patio. And um, that's something that I've always wanted. And these use behind behind me here. Um, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I am going to train those into an archway as well. So eventually we'll sort of have entrance, entrances into all of the rooms. So the RHS says that Star Jasmine is um, H4, which means it's hardy in most of the UK. So it's hardy down to between minus five and minus 10, which is why it needs a little bit of protection because I think last year we did get down to minus 11. I mean, if that's ever gonna happen again, I'll probably run out here with some fleece or something. The other thing is that star jasmine doesn't like getting too hot. So it's another good reason to plant it here because it's going to get shelter from the midday sun or the most of the sun from um, the trees that we've got here. So I've got a holm oak here, which is also evergreen, um, but also these plants here grow quite big um, during the summer months. So it will get some protection from the really hot sun. So the problem with too much sun for the star jasmine is it makes it more susceptible to scale insects and red spider mites. Um, that's just something I've read. I don't have any experience of that, but hopefully we won't get any of those because I've put it in the right spot. What I've also read is that um, if the star jasmine experiences cold winters, so I guess, you know, down to minus five, uh, which we'll probably get every year, I should think, um, where we live here in the UK, even though the climate is warming, um, 
uh, the, some of the leaves will turn purple or red. Um, so that might be quite a nice added interest in the winter months. It does recover from that as long as it doesn't get too cold. In between the yew and the star jasmine, I'm planting a hydrangea. So I've chosen a hydrangea because it's going to be a shady spot. And also this soil here doesn't dry out too much in the summer. Uh, we have got a watering system in um, if it does dry out too much, but it really never has. Um, so I've chosen a hydrangea because I think it will do really well in this spot. And the one that I've chosen is a macrophylla hydrangea, hydrangea which means it's a mop head it's got sort of a rounded head and the one I've chosen is called Madame Emile Moulier I think that's how you pronounce it um, I'll put the name up on the screen so this is quite a small shrub it'll grow to about two and a half by two meters so the flowers on this particular hydrangea are white with a tiny tinge of pink and I think as they get older like as the flower heads mature that's when you get more pink um, um, and obviously this is going to be lovely winter interest so you know I'll leave the flower heads on and they'll stay there through the winter so it's just going to fill in this sort of bare patch in my garden a bit so you don't have to do too much with mop head hydrangeas they're fairly easy to look after uh, they just need a little bit of mulch in the spring and just lop off the flower heads um, you know take off the old flower heads and new flower heads will grow so we've got the yew, then we'll have the hydrangea and then the jasmine. And then in this spot here in the corner, I've got an absolutely gorgeous plant and I'm so excited about it. So I've chosen a dutia for this spot and it's a beautiful little dutia called Yuki Cherry Blossom. It's only going to grow to 60 by 60. The best thing about this dutia and why I've chosen to put it in this spot here is that it will look really good sort of trailing over the edge there over the wall and it's this gorgeous gorgeous pink color so it's super compact and it's going to create this really rounded shape and all the pictures I've seen um, it's absolutely festooned covered in blossom the other great thing about this dutia which has got lovely deep green leaves is that the leaves are going to turn gorgeous purpley bronze colors in the autumn so again it's going to give me more than one season's worth of joy so this dutia is going to flower between april and june and the flowers are super pretty so they're pink and then they've got a white edge around them and then on the inside they're kind of white and pink as well so they're really striking so now we're just going to plant the plants. I'm going to add some plant food to the bottom of each planting hole and that should be done. Oh, first of all, we do need to measure where we want the arch to go. So let's get that done first. Well, I think it needs to kind of go in the middle of the bed because it's going to bush out and we don't want it like bushing out yeah. onto the pathway because then we won't be able to walk. So I think, oh, I mean, I think we could do 2.5.
Well, I could not be happier. I'm so excited about putting the arch up. So that will obviously be in a following vlog. Um, but we've planted the plants that I've been waiting to plant for so long. This is actually the area where I moved the poppies just before Christmas and propagated the poppies. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, you can catch up on my channel. But there were some poppies here. They weren't doing particularly well because it just wasn't sunny enough. Um, but now I've got loads of stuff in there that will do well in semi-shade. Um, but it'll also get morning sun. And one day very soon I'll be putting an arch up. Anyway I really hope you've enjoyed this and found it interesting and fun and thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel do subscribe it really does help me make such a big difference and if you hit the like button that also makes a really big difference. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.